workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are preparing to decontaminate large amounts of radioactive water. The plant operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, plans to start using newly installed purification equipment next week. It's a mammoth job. More than 105,000 tons of toxic water is believed to have accumulated in the basements of the reactors and turbine buildings. An additional 500 tons or so is added every day as more water is injected into the reactors to keep them cool. TEPCO will use the new filtering equipment to decontaminate about 1,200 tons of water per day. The purified water will be transferred to temporary storage tanks. On Wednesday, TEPCO tested the controls for a device that absorbs radioactive cesium. It was developed in the U.S. Workers also tested the pumps on a machine provided by France, which uses chemicals to separate out toxic substances. I think the word scam is really uh, strong enough to describe the crap that these guys do. Workers have completed the removal of radioactive debris that was outside the number three reactor building at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company says this will enable workers to bring in equipment to stably cool the reactor. TEPCO workers finished removing the debris near the entrance to the building on Tuesday. Work began last month to clear the debris created by the March hydrogen explosion. TEPCO plans to inject nitrogen into the number three reactor containment vessel to prevent hydrogen explosions. It also plans to install a circulatory cooling system. But last month, High radiation levels of 160 to 170 millisieverts per hour were detected near the door of the containment vessel. TEPCO says workers will enter the reactor building to check the debris inside and to monitor radiation levels in the area. The company says it will consider installing devices to remove radioactive substances in the atmosphere and setting up lead panels to block radiation. Japanese government's nuclear safety agency has instructed utility companies across the country to come up with measures to better respond to a serious nuclear accident. The government has already compiled a report for the International Atomic Energy Agency about the nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi. It says the plant lacked sufficient safety measures to deal with a serious accident that caused the loss of all power sources. This is about disseminating information. Yeah, just like uh, telling lies to people is about disseminating information. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency asked utility firms to prepare portable lights and communication equipment, as well as generator trucks. These vehicles would be used for emergency ventilation to keep radiation below certain levels in the central control room. The agency also proposes boring holes or removing panels in a reactor building if there's a high concentration of hydrogen. The measure is aimed at releasing hydrogen outside to prevent an explosion. The agency has instructed utility companies to submit the safety measures by Tuesday next week. Researchers have found that the seabed off Japan's northeastern coast had been gradually sinking days before the March 11th earthquake. A team from Tohoku University analyzed data taken at two monitoring sites 80 kilometers off the Oshika Peninsula in Miyagi Prefecture. In late May, the team recovered measuring devices from the seafloor at a depth of 1,200 meters. The data shows that the sea bottom subsided 15 centimeters from a magnitude 7.3 quake on March 9th and 1 meter in a magnitude 9 quake on March 11th. The data also indicates that the seabed had been sinking at a rate of several centimeters per day between the two tremors. The researchers say the finding may help them to unravel the mechanism of an imminent gigantic earthquake. We hope to use this information to improve the predictions of major quakes. Tokyo Electric Power Company has been struggling for weeks to deal with problems at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. But now, a nearby facility is posing problems. TEPCO is trying to determine whether it can decontaminate seawater that's pooled at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant and then release it into the ocean. TEPCO says about 3,000 cubic meters of radioactive seawater has been lying stagnant in the basement of a plant's reactor and turbine buildings since the tsunami hit on March 11th. The facility is located about 10 kilometers south of Fukushima Daiichi. 
The utility says the temperature in all four reactors at Fukushima Daini has fallen below 100 degrees Celsius, but it says there is a risk the seawater will corrode equipment. TEPCO is starting a plan to decontaminate the water to meet national safety standards and then release it to the Pacific Ocean. Japan's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says the con concentration of radioactive cobalt-60 in the water is 1.5 times the permissible limit. It says no other radioactive materials exceed safety standards. TEPCO drew strong criticism back in April after it released contaminated water from Fukushima Daiichi into the Pacific that had radioactive iodine-131 at levels about 100 times the legal limit. We're looking at new pictures this morning of Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant. Look at the damage here. New video that shows what the hydrogen explosion at one of the reactors caused. And workers are still trying to bring this plant under control after March's devastating earthquake and tsunami. We are learning this morning that the crisis may be even worse than first thought. Now we've heard that from time to time, but there's new evidence of that today. So we hook up again this morning with Craig Dale, who's with us via Skype from Tokyo. Hearing that it's worse, Craig, the words that we're, we're hearing is that there was a melt-through at Fukushima Daiichi. What are you hearing there? Yeah, I mean, this is coming uh, from a report the Japanese government submitted to the International Atomic Energy Agency. And, and what it's saying is that, you know, it, there was a meltdown, which Japan was actually late in confirming. Uh, they took, you know, many uh, days before they would admit that a meltdown happened in reactors 1, 2, and 3 of Fukushima Daiichi. Now they're talking about this melt-through that you're referring to, and that, that's just what it sounds like. The fuel was so hot that it not only melted, it was, you know, reached temperatures of 28 degrees Celsius. The fuel was so hot that it not only melted, it was, you know, reached temperatures of 28 degrees Celsius, Celsius. it melted, and then it melted its way through the reactor uh, pressure vessel, which sort of protects it. And now the Japanese government is saying that this fuel is lying on the, on the bottom of the uh, containment vessel, which is a concrete structure that, that further sort of protects the environment from, from this fuel being, being leaking or leaking out. What the government is saying is that right now the, the fuel is, is on the bottom of this concrete structure. It's, it's being cooled by water that's, that's there. But the, the fear is that this, this structure won't be good enough and it will, can, this melt-through will continue. And that would be disastrous because the fuel would be getting into the environment, it would get into the soil and the water, and that's the problem that they, they don't want to be dealing with. You know, the, the reason people are, are, are sort of skeptical is that the Japanese government has uh, admitted along the way that it's it's been making mistakes. In the same report to the IAEA, it, it admits that it, it mishandled this it, this uh, accident at Fukushima Daiichi. It admits that it wasn't prepared for it. Um, we've heard from Tokyo Electric Power Company over and over again. They they were late, as I said, in identifying that a that a meltdown actually happened. And they were also, you know, late when it came to the timing of what was going on. I mean, U.S. officials admitted that they, they thought a meltdown had happened within hours of the, of the accident on March 11th, the, the tsunami that disabled the cooling systems for what was going on. I mean, U.S. officials admitted that they, they thought a meltdown had happened within hours of the, of the accident on March 11th, the, the tsunami that disabled the cooling systems for, for the uh, reactor. So, again, lots of skepticism, but a lot of fear, too, because, you know, the... the, the the fuel, if it does get in the environment, will, will be, you know, cause, uh, you know, many, many disasters in that area. Uh, uh, you know, the soil would be poisoned, so would groundwater. And so, you know, skepticism and, and also some fear, but, you know, hopefully when the IEA sees this report, they'll be able to continue to cooperate with the Japanese government and figure out what's going on at Fukushima Daiichi. Again, TEPCO is still saying that it's going to get this, this uh, <laughs> nuclear facility into cold shutdown by the end of the year, but a lot of people say it's going to take much longer than that. It sounds like a lot of questions remaining in this one. Thanks a lot, Craig. Really appreciate okay. it. The update there from Craig Dale in. The number of people who committed suicide in Japan exceeded 3,000 in May. It was the highest monthly figure for two years. The National Police Agency says the number of suicides reached 3,281 in May, 18 percent more than in the same month last year. By prefecture, Tokyo topped the list with 325 suicides, followed by 210 in Kanagawa and 206 in Osaka. In the areas hardest hit by the disaster, Fukushima saw 68 suicides, an increase of 19. The figure for Miyagi was unchanged, while Iwate saw a slight decline of 3. 
Until March, suicides had been on the decline since last year. The government had strengthened suicide prevention measures, working with local councils to offer counseling. The police say they have no evidence linking the spike in suicides to Japan's disasters, but they plan to make detailed analyses of individual cases in cooperation with the Cabinet Office and other ministries.